Hey, in today's episode of Motors and Meats, we're gonna be addressing my cooling system and we've got some pork spare ribs on the smoker. So my car, it's been getting a little bit warm while I'm sitting in traffic and I noticed that the fans were not kicking on around 190 degrees where it's supposed to. But once it gets all the way up to 210 where it starts to get a little sketchy, they were kicking on for the high speed fans. I already checked the relays and they're all doing the same thing, so it's gotta be the resistors. So let's check that out and I hope you're hungry. With the bumper off, you can get right to where this guy is, these resistors. And that's it right there, that's one of the resistors. And it's tied into the fan, which is, let's go upside down for a minute, right there. And there's one, of course, on each side for each fan. Now you can actually see this with the bumper on, but since we needed to go ahead and clean out inside here where the radiators get clogged up, in between the radiators and the condensers, it figured it'd be a good idea to go ahead and do both at the same time. So with this cover off, you can see straight at the radiators and look at what just fell out of here. This is after almost exactly one year since the last time I did this. I'm not a smoker. Those are not my butts. I do eat Snickers. That might be mine. I don't know. Most of this stuff just picks up off the road, but you can see the real reason to do this rather than just cram a shop vac wand up inside of here is because of what happens in between here. This stuff accumulates and we're gonna pop this off and be able to get the rest of this out. So once you pop those two screws off, there's this tab right here that it catches in. We're gonna do this without unhooking this. So these are hard lines, but they're connected to flexible lines. So pulling this out is not really problem. There we go. Now look down inside of there. Look at that. So this is just one year and the last time I did this it had not been done for quite a while and this area was just completely filled with all kinds of goodies. This side was just as bad, look at that. Good grief, nasty. And then back inside up here again, same thing. Lots of filth. Would be worse if I didn't do this every year though. So I'll go ahead and tell you that I am not the best solderer, if that's a word, solderer? solderer in the world and uh this job definitely requires that so going underneath the radiator right here i've got this pulled down this is the new piece right here and i've got it soldered in and heat shrinked at all the right locations here and the only thing left to do is clip it back into this clip and then that side is done uh, aside from putting everything back together again but i'll set the camera up and see if i can't show you guys how to actually make the soldering happen in case you happen to be a noob like me as well before we dive into that other side let's check on the barbecue look at that that looks nice starting to see some separation here some bones pulling back oh look at that that one's trying to tear through nice i went ahead and pulled off the rack that uh was trying to tear through Ooh, still hot so let's see how tender those came out just comes right off. 
Hmm. Not bad, not bad. So anyway, let's uh, <laughs> get back and finish the car. There, you can see the one wire goes off by itself. That's gonna be the one that matches up to your white and green combined wire. So all you have to do is actually cut these wires. You wanna cut them back, you know, give yourself a little bit of room so that you can strip them. And then you'll cut the wires off of the new resistor because it comes with a lot of things you don't need, like an extra clip and uh, a, a plug that goes up to where these two wires go. We're not gonna use any of that. We're just gonna cut that off of the old one cut it off of the new one, strip the wires back, solder them together, and then they look just like this. Look at that. Oh, that's so ugly. But once I knock that piece off the top and it finishes cooling down, I'll slide the heat shrink tube over it and, uh, and it'll be good to go. So after you slide that heat shrink up over all of your soldering, take a heat gun. And shrink the heat shrink. You can do this with a blow dryer. You can even do this with the tip of your soldering iron if you don't have any kind of heat source handy that blows hot air. But this is the best way. So we do that two more times. Granted, that first one's the toughest. So if you only have one person to do it, it's just about impossible to hold everything that you need to hold all at the same time without wedging this piece up into somewhere underneath there. I found a spot that it would hold still while I pushed the wires together, then did the soldering iron. Once that's done, you just have to make sure not to put too big of a solder knot there. Otherwise you won't be able to fit the heat shrink back over it. But you can always remelt the solder just a little bit and get it to sink down more into the wires. And that's what I had to do on this one quite a few times here, just to make sure that I had plenty on there. That first shot that I showed you, I wasn't near done. <laughs> that was just the first shot of it. But anyway, I've got it all on there. So next we'll do the other two wires and uh, put everything back together. And the next thing you'll see is me test driving it to make sure that this thing does its job. Test drive time. We're coming up to temperature, let me show you. So once that needle crosses the 180 mark, it gets closer to about where 190 is. That's where the fans should kick on. So what I'm gonna do is bring it all the way up to temp and then I'm just gonna park in a parking lot and let it idle and we'll stand outside and see if the fans kick on. Just finished driving about 10 miles straight up the highway and you can see the temperature stayed right on the 180 mark. As I pulled off the highway, as usual, it started to creep up just a bit 
and you can see it's slightly above the mark now. Let's step outside and see if we can hear those fans kick on. Needles right between the eight and the zero now. It still hasn't kicked on, but it ought to any second now. There it is, it's blowing now. You can see if I can throw something in here. Yep. So there you have it. It looks like that's a pretty easy DIY job. Not the end of the world. Uh, if you have some skill at soldering, you probably will do a lot better at it than I did. Also, if you have a lift and can get underneath the car a little easier, that would definitely make things a lot easier. So don't be afraid to try something new. <laughs> I've never soldered more than once in the last 15 years. So uh, yeah, what, just learn the principles, go to YouTube, find some tutorials on it. You can do it, okay? Cool, thanks for watching.